Hi everyone, it's Laura from Prequilt, and we are so excited to tell you about our newest feature, Fabric Calculations. So we've put together a bit of a demo quilt, which is a starter quilt with nine star blocks, some skinny sashing, cornerstones, borders, and binding. And now that you have it all visualized, you want to make it. So how would you do that? Well, you can start with the Fabric Calculator button, and it when you click on it, it's going to open up a new tab. And it's going to have an overview of the quilt that you're making, as well as an, uh, a little image of each of your quilt blocks, as well as the sashing and the cornerstones. And it'll also have the name of the block, how many of them you need, and the finished size of it. You can scroll down and see a bit of an overview on the fabrics, what, what fabrics they are, and how many inches and yardage you'll need to make the quilt, or that's the calculations that we've come up with. These are the bare minimum, you know, assuming that your fabric is totally square, etc., which we all know is not always true. And if you want to know how we came up with those calculations, you can click on the fabric tab, and we have all the cutting diagrams here with all the pieces from the quilt. So this is what the, you know, like the tool or the computer has suggested or recommended you put these pieces together in the most efficient use of fabric. So you can see here we have fabric A, fabric C. Um, it says that we need 0.28 yards. And so, you know, maybe if you wanted to see would this fit on a fat quarter, you could change the width of fabric. Um, put in the fat quarter you have, and you can see, okay, unfortunately, no, that's not going to fit on a fat quarter. It's going to need 19 inches, and assuming that your fat quarter isn't square or anything like that, you're just not going to be able to fit it all in. Um, but it was worth a shot, and it's good to know before you start cutting that you're not going to have enough. So um, the border, border fabrics are always going to come in as a default along the length of fabric. But this is such a small quilt and it's not the most efficient use of fabric. So what you can do is you can rotate each of those border pieces and it's going to then put them on the width of fabric. And now we can say we save a lot of fabric by doing it along the width of fabric. And so you can always override some of the suggestions that we make um, because you're going to see maybe a more efficient way of using your fabric. Each of these little fabric cut pieces come with a code. And you can um, you can see how they linked to the block blowouts. So when you click on the blocks tab, you can see each of these quilt blocks can be blown out into the individual cut pieces that make up the quilt block. So all of the ones in this quilt block are going to be B. So you know that all the B's go together, and you can see that we have a square and a square unit. And when you go down to the cut pieces, you can see that the square and the square can be constructed via snowball method, or it can also be made using the traditional piece method. And you can choose which method you like, and the calculator will dynamically um, change the requirements that you'll need to make that square and square with that construction method. We can also see that we have a flying geese with B3 and B4. And again, we need four of these. We can do it the snowball method, or we could do it the four at a time method, um, which will give you all of them at once. And if you're not really sure, or you need a refresher on how you would construct that flying geese that way, you can go over to the help guide and it will give you an overview of the flying geese and prequel, but it'll also have sewing construction diagrams that you can click on and get a refresher or get an understanding of how you can make a four at a time flying piece um, using one large square and four small squares. These are available also as a downloadable PDF. So you can click on that, download it, print it, and just use it in your sewing room when you're, when you're sewing it. On the left-hand side, all of those um, quilt names are also buttons. So you can go to directly to the quilt block that you'd like to make or have a better understanding of. Um, and then the quilt overview is just an overview of all the pieces. So it's not gonna break down each of those things, but it'll tell you all the pieces you need to make that quilt block.
Once you're done making the quilt top and you need to know how much backing fabric you need, there's also a tab for that. And you can also customize the overage. So I make all my quilts from home or I quilt them at home and I don't need a huge overage. Um, so you can input that information and it will dynamically tell you how much fabric you need. So since this is such a small quilt, there's no seam, but it would show you where the seam would be. And you can pick your options. The backing, uh, the binding fabric is also here and you can customize your, you know, preferred width of fabric strip and it'll tell you how many strips you need and the total yardage as well. So going back to the overview, you can see all the information that you need. If you have any questions about the fabric calculator or the block units, how we construct them, you can go and use the help guide that we have. So you can click on that and it'll go to the help guide. And we'd also really love to hear what you think. And if there's anything wrong or you have any suggestions on what we can put into the 2.0 version. Um, lastly, if you go over to the blocks tab, you can also print this information out in order to save it as a PDF. And it'll give you all the breakdowns of all the information that you need. Any one of those tabs can be printed into its own PDF. So you can just save that to your computer and print it out. So we're so excited to see how you guys use this and give us any kind of information or feedback you'd like. Thanks. Bye.